Launch team is go for launch. From T minus four minutes until launch, you will be listening to Ron McKee and his team performing the final steps in the countdown procedure. Several critical activities occur in the final minutes before launch, including verifying fuel tank and pressure levels in both the Atlas booster and Centaur upper stage, while also arming the flight termination system. At T minus 25 seconds, you'll hear go Atlas, go Centaur, go SES. This is the final status check of Atlas, Centaur, and SES readiness. At T minus three seconds, the main engine ignites, followed by ignition of the solid rocket boosters. Then, after seeing Atlas V lift off the launch pad, you'll begin hearing the flight commentator Jesse Gonzalez providing launch vehicle ascent data. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus four minutes and holding. We anticipate releasing the hold in just a few moments. Mark the time will be T minus four minutes and counting. Three, two, one, mark. T minus three minutes and 55 seconds. Ground pyros enabled. The countdown clock has resumed and we are go for launch at 5.36 p.m. Eastern. With liftoff approaching, we're going to raise the volume on our launch team so you can hear the final preps taking place. T minus three minutes. T minus three minutes and counting. Op number zero five seven. Securing LO two topping. Two fifty. Atlas tanks at flight pressure. FPS internal. One fifty nine. Vehicle internal. One fifty five. Launch sequencer start. One fifty. Securing Centaur LH two. Securing Centaur LO two. One forty. Launch enabled. One thirty seven. FPS arm. T minus 90 seconds. The launch vehicle payload ground systems in eastern range are go for launch. 120. OCU is armed. FCS count started. 115. Reduce ECS for launch. Roger. 110. Send valves locked. T minus one minute. T minus one minute. Range green.
40 seconds. Stable at step three. Twenty-eight. Verify ECS reduced for launch. Verify. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go SES. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, one, two, one. And lift off of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket, carrying SES 20 and 21 for SES, the leading provider of global content connectivity solutions. Program. After 15 seconds of flight, the U.S. is going to close the control. Jesse Gonzalez providing launch vehicle send data. And 40 seconds into play. Atlas 5 is now supersonic. And the vehicle is now passing through max view, maximum dynamic pressure. And the Arctic 180 is now throttling back up as expected. Engine response continues to look good. Passing a minute into flight, continuing to see uh, good SRV chamber pressures. Uh, RD-180 pump speed and fuel injector pressures are uh, responding well to demands on the engine. Vehicle is continuing right down the middle of the range track. on all three SRBs, standing by for SRB jettison in about 20 seconds. And we have good jettison of all three SRBs. And the vehicle has gone to closed loop guidance. And the RD-180 is throttled down as expected. Engine response continues to look good. About two minutes remaining in the boost phase of flight. Uh, the vehicle is now 45 miles in altitude, uh, 70 miles downrange, traveling at 5,500 miles per hour. Passing three minutes into flight, the uh, RD-180 is throttling down again, as expected. Engine response continues to look good, and the RCS system is now pressurizing to flight levels. And about one minute remaining in the boost phase of flight. And we've had good indication of payload fairing jettison and Centaur forward load reactor jettison. And the RD-180 is now uh, throttling up as expected. Engine response continues to look good. And the RD-180 is now throttling to maintain a constant 4.6 G acceleration limit. And Centaur has begun the uh, boost phase chill down sequence to thermally condition the RL-10 for operation. Standing by for BECO shortly. And we 
with that VECO booster engine cutoff. And we've had Atlas Centaur separation and seeing good uh, pre start on the RL 10. Standing by for MES 1 shortly. And we have ignition for the first burn of today's mission. Uh, this will be the first of three Centaur burns for today's mission. It will last a little over seven minutes. RL-10 uh, operating parameters and vehicle body rates are looking good in the first part of the burn. Uh, vehicle continues down the middle of the range track now at uh, 120 miles in altitude, um, 500 miles downrange, traveling at uh, about 13,000 miles per hour. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 5 minutes 45 seconds. We just heard flight commentator Jesse Gonzalez confirm the successful completion of the early phase of today's flight and all systems continue to operate nominally. Our next event, Centaur Main Engine Cutoff, will occur in about seven minutes. During this time I have the pleasure of welcoming during this time I have the pleasure of welcoming ULA's commercial program director, Vernon Thorpe. Thanks for joining us, Vern. Thanks, Ryan. It's a pleasure to be here. Cool. So we just lifted off on a long ascent to orbit. What should we expect to happen over the next six hours? Okay, well, we just saw the, uh, the initial booster ascent phase, so now what we're going to do is three Centaur burns uh, to complete this mission. Uh, the first burn is happening right now, of course. That'll last about seven and a half minutes. Uh, when that is complete, we'll enter a 12-minute 12, uh, 12 minute parking orbit coast, and then we'll have a second Centaur burn. That Centaur burn will last about five minutes. And that will place us into a geosynchronous transfer orbit. So the, uh, the highest point of that orbit will be up at geosynchronous altitude. So after five hours, when we're at the top uh, of that elliptical orbit, we will do another Centaur burn. It'll be just over two minutes long, and that will essentially circularize uh, the mission. And at that point, we'll be very close to uh, a geosynchronous orbit. We'll take out most of the inclination during that burn as well, and we'll go from about 28 degrees down to about 1.9 degrees of inclination. Um, following that, we'll separate the satellites. We're going to separate the satellites 40 minutes uh, apart, and that'll be centered around the, the T plus 6 hour mark, so one about 20 minutes before and 20 minutes after that. Very nice. And why might a orbit matching Earth's rotation be necessary for for these satellites, SCS-20 and 21? Well, well, that's the advantage of a, of a geosynchronous orbit for many communication satellites. You know, at that altitude, the uh, time that it takes to do one orbit of the Earth matches the time it takes uh, for Earth to rotate once. So from an observer on the surface of the Earth, it looks like the satellite is stationary in the sky. So since you have that, that fixed uh, relative position, uh, that's very convenient. Uh, when the satellite needs to provide continuous communication coverage to uh, to antennas on the Earth. All right. So next question for you. Following separation from ULA Centaur, SES 20 and 21 will be operational fairly quickly. What more can you tell us about that? Well, they'll be operational very quickly because of that near geosynchronous orbit that we're placing them into. A uh, typical GTO uh, type mission where the orbit, whether the spacecraft has to uh, do the orbit raising up to geosynchronous. For a satellite like this, for these two satellites, it would take about five to six months because they have electric propulsion systems, they're very low thrust systems, uh, so it takes a long time to achieve the final orbit. Um, with this mission today, we're going to put them almost uh, exactly where they need to be for their final operational orbit, so it cuts out most of that orbit raising time, and uh, it'll allow them to get both spacecraft, uh, SES to get both spacecraft operational about five months earlier than if we had flown a traditional GTO mission profile. Very nice. All right, so that leads to our Atlas rocket is quite a legacy of support to commercial satellite missions. Tell us a little more about some of the missions we've put in orbit. Uh, 
Sure. So uh, both Atlas and Delta, uh, the, the rockets we fly at ULA, have been launching commercial satellites since the early 1960s. Um, in fact, we launched what many consider to be the first true uh, commercial communication satellite, and that was the Telstar mission that Delta launched in July of 1962. And that was such a big deal at the time that it actually inspired a hit song that year. It was recorded by the Tornadoes. Uh, that was 1962. Um, after that, for the first few decades um, of our business, we uh, launched a lot of commercial satellites, but our customers had to work through either NASA or the Air Force at the time. In the mid-1980s, that changed. Um, there was the Commercial Space Act and there was other legislation that allowed users to work directly with uh, US launch vehicle companies. And since that time, we've launched hundreds of missions, a lot of commercial missions, missions for NASA uh, and the Air Force as well. Um, but really, since the 1960s, Atlas and Delta have really helped lay the foundation for the, for the entire uh, commercial space industry. And uh, Centaur was originally designed for high energy, highly accurate interplanetary missions, but our commercial customers have taken advantage of its capabilities uh, as well. Very nice. I'll have to give Telstar, was it? Telstar, yeah. Telstar, listen. So commercial missions will be a big part of ULA's future. Can you give us a look ahead? Yeah, since Atlas and Delta came together to form ULA in 2006, we've had about 15% uh, of our missions have been commercial launches. That's gonna ramp up to 50% over the next few years, and that will include uh, geosynchronous uh, communication satellites like we're launching today. It'll include commercial missions for NASA, crew and cargo, and of course the, uh, the Kuiper satellites for Amazon as well. All right, well, thank you for joining us today, Vern. Uh, appreciate having you on. Okay, my pleasure, Ryan, thank you. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 11 minutes, 33 seconds. We are now approaching the end of the first burn of the Centaur second stage. Let's listen in as we approach this next event. And standing by for Miko shortly. And we've had main engine cutoff. RL-10 shutdown signatures look good. And the RCS system is now commanding 100% settling. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 12 minutes 26 seconds. Jessica Gonzalez has reported successful cutoff of the first of three Centaur engine burns. The SES-20 satellite is scheduled to separate from ULA Centaur upper stage into a new near geosynchronous orbit in about six hours, followed by SES-21. Once we sign off in a few moments, you can stay updated on today's long ascent to orbit with ULA's live blog at ulalaunch.com or join the conversation on Twitter and Facebook. I'd like to thank Jesse Gonzalez for his participation in today's show. I'm Ryan Gendoli. Uh, we'll take another look at liftoff, which occurred at 5.36 p.m. Thanks for joining us. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We have ignition. 2, 1. And liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying SES 20 and 21 for SES, the leading provider of global content connectivity solutions. Program. Passing 15 seconds into flight, the EU has gone to close loop control. Coming up on 30 seconds into flight, uh, RD 180 is throttled back as expected. Engine response looks good. You're hearing the voice of Jesse.